With his easy demeanor and optimistic campaign, a new beverage was sweeping the nation. Following the debate with soda, Pop's influence was felt from the Great Lakes to the Great Northwest. We now take you to some of the highlights. The last thing our nation needs in this hard-working economic environment is a world which lacks a good, stiff drink. Now I say this with all due respect. Pop, after all, is nothing but a soft drink. I uh, am not offended by the idea that I am viewed by some as a soft drink, but take it as a compliment. After all, can a drink really be too soft? I uh, find it odd to be labeled as soft when certain drinks among us, encased in glass, are often known to be very heavy, easily breakable, and deemed frankly quite delicate under any combat situation. While you were back at home attending fundraising parties with your friend Tonic, I was being dropped on Berlin for the airlift. His appeal was not without controversy. And in his next statement, we can hear how contemporary nutritional sensibilities have changed. Free drinks are for all the people, young and the elderly. I intend for Pop to be drunk as often as possible. I have no problem even being drunk in retirement homes or drunk in schools by children. This is an outrage. Pop will not be drunk in the schools. It is not the time or the place for such a thing. The recipe for success is one of patience and not the silly liquid candy proposed by my opponent. The proper name for a carbonated beverage has been soda since Roman times. Soda, with its time-proven uses, serves us in all of our times of need. One that has timeless values and does not see the need for flashy exhibitions of uh, fizzing out in public just for the sake of impressing a young, impressionable audience. Soda has been used to clean tank tracks on the battlefield. It has been used in your grandmother's kitchen to make cakes rise further and better than otherwise possible. Children use soda to make their toy rockets fly further. Soda has always been there and will always be there for you. Thank you. I admit, I become shaken up at times and uh, often have a trouble containing my enthusiasm, for we would rather be enjoyed among friends than to be ice cold and in good taste, and yet bottled up and inaccessible. For those of you who would criticize the oversimplification of pop culture, I say to you that we as beverages should not be judged as a whether or not we call ourselves soda or pop or in glass, aluminum or tin, but rather by the content of our container. As any college student on any campus across this land can tell you, the finest beverages, wherever they may be, are simply those that remain free. Thank you and God bless America. Sadly, after grabbing a tremendous market share, Pop fizzled out when he offended key allies among powerful Southern interests. Free drinks? Of course, Governor. Now, boy, perhaps we ain't communicating right. I know we all have our little fantasies, but y'all gotta face facts. Some beverages just ain't meant to be free. I'm afraid that I, uh, will, uh, have to, uh, disagree with you, sir. Best mind your own business here, Pop. You're messing with the real thing. And, uh, what is that supposed to mean? Good day, Pop. It was soon leaked that Pop experimented often with artificial colors. And to the drinking public's dismay, at times, even his sweetness was artificially enhanced. Some of his appearances later that year were very controversial. For, as he promised, he was constantly drunk in public, and yes, sometimes by school children. A well-known Southern doctor soon had Pop taken to a recycling center. Pop's career, or as some called it at the time, popularity, ended when, one night, having indeed been drunk, he also got smashed. Pop, the canned beverage sweeping the nation, has had his container recycled. When he found out he had lost his worthy adversary, Soda was shattered. 
Today, however, all is not lost. As, after several reported meltdowns, Pop serves us again as a vital part of a wing flap on a 737 jetliner. 